Today I'm going to be making a part for the Johnny Five project being done by NYC CNC. Welcome to another episode. A little while ago I noticed a post on Instagram from Saunders Machine Works, John Saunders, asking for volunteers to help make parts for the Johnny Five robot that they're building. You can find more information in the link below. They were looking for machines who could ma help make parts, and I signed up. I said, ooh, this would be fun. Uh, this would be a good chance for me to uh, hone my skills and get even better making parts on my Haas OM5. They sent me the parts, and I started working on it. One of the things you'll see is that I had a lot of challenges and issues, uh, but I, I learned a whole lot, and, it, and I'm feeling a lot more confident. So let's take a look at the issues I ran into. The first thing I ran into is that I was trying to do a tighten some CNC. In other words, I was trying to get maximum uh, material removal rate. Now, this machine uses uh, e ISO 20 tool holders. They're pretty small tool holders. And it uses ER16 collets. I do have one tool holder for ER20 but all of my other tool holders that came with the machine are ER16. So ER16 doesn't have as much holding power as ER20 would be. And the other thing is that I was using an Aluma Power carbide end mill, which seems like it's fairly slick, so it comes out easier than I would have expected. So the first thing I did is I got some material that was 3 quarters of an inch thick by one inch. Now this part is uh, 0.625 inches thick, I believe. When I cut the part and put it in the vise, I thought, hmm, that looks like it's uh, kind of low and there might be an issue here. So I measured it and discovered that, yes, in fact, it was sitting down about 0.15 inches from the top of the vise, and therefore I didn't have clearance to mill all the way around the part. Now at that point I got distracted and came back and for some reason I pressed the cycle start button and let's take a look at what happened. Well, that wasn't good. Uh, fortunately, this is a fairly cheap vise. Uh, I'm thinking about buying a better vise. I marred up the vise. I destroyed the end mill. The machine seems to be okay. That's good. But uh, this is a warning to me that I need to be a little bit more careful with the machine. This is a precision machine. I need to treat it like a precision machine rather than as a, a hogging machine, like a uh, VF2 or something like that. Of course, the question is, why did I press the cycle start button? And the answer is I got distracted. The thing I learned from this is that if I discover, once I have the stock in the vise, that it's not going to fit, what I should do is take the stock out of the vise so I'm not tempted to press cycle start. All right, next thing I did is I ordered some uh, material that was thicker. So I went with, I think it was uh, one inch by 1.5 inches, something like that. So that way I would have plenty of clearance. But I still was going to full tighten. This time I was using full depth of cut with a width of cut of about 50 thousandths of an inch. And according to G Wizard, that would have been fine. And let's take a look at the milling. I'll show you that. As you can see from the milling here, I'm getting really good uh, chip removal. It's actually pretty cool. 
But what I didn't realize at the time is that the end mill was pulling out as well. That was the first thing. The second thing is I decided to do full depth of cut and engagement of, I think, 50 thousandths of an inch. I measured the tool afterwards as a result of looking at the part and discovering that the part was out of specs. And when I measured the tool again, it had moved down by about 70 thousandths of an inch. So I kept backing off uh, and then finally went to about, uh, I'll have to check the numbers, but I think it's about 0.3 inches depth of cut and a width of cut on the order of 10% of the tool diameter. And at that, it had no problems at all. This is a 1 8 inch end mill at 15,000 RPM during slotting. Now this doesn't have to be really precise because I'm going to reset the zero point once I get rid of the hat there. For the next operation I have the uh, X and Y set to Z here. So I'm going to put the hammer in and uh, reset the uh, zero point. Now when the part came out, as you can see in this photo, the chamfer around the hole and along the sides is not in the correct location. It's very strong on one side, or two sides I should say, and then nothing on the other two sides. Uh, I did some measurements to discover that the slot, uh, the long slot, was not in the correct position either and it was off by roughly 20 thousandths of an inch. And I thought for the longest time trying to figure out what could happen. And then it dawned on me, which is, maybe I had the wrong Heimer tip. So I checked the Heimer tip. In fact, I checked the box, and uh, as you can see here, this is the wrong part number. This is the part number, let me get it to focus again. This is the part number for the four millimeter diameter tip. So I ordered the wrong tips. And because I ordered the wrong tips, it meant that when I was picking up the back left corner or the back right corner, whichever, I was off by a little bit more than 20 thousandths of an inch. So that explains the problem. I've ordered a new tip, but in the meantime, I'm going to make hopefully the last version of the part. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pick up the two sides, so like the left side and the right side, and then I'm going to add them together and divide by two to get the middle position, which is what I'll use for the G54 offsets for X and Y. And that will basically compensate for, average out the difference between the two sides. So it won't matter that I have the right tip, it'll still come out with the exact 
correct coordinate. So I'm going to go and uh, cut another piece of material, add to the machine, mill everything up, and then I'll bring it back when I get to indicating the center position and setting up center. So the uh, first side is done, and what I'll do is I'll just take it out of the vise, and then I'm going to flip it over. And what I need to do before I flip it over is check my screen to see what the coordinate systems are for the next side. So I'm going to click on the, uh, the top cap, and uh, then flip it over so that I've got X heading this way and Y is that way. And so that tells me that the coordinate system I want is the back right. Okay, I'm looking at my computer screen to see where this hole needs to be. And uh, this hole is going to be on the left side, so that means I'm going to flip it this way. Alright, what I'm going to do now is pick up the left side. Uh, set this to G54, pick up the right side, and set this to uh, G55, and then uh, add and divide those by two to get the center point. And then over here I'll press the offset to get to the offset page here. And I want X right there for G54, and I'll press part zero. So now I've got G54 there. I'll head down to G55 and then go back and uh, pick up the right side. Alright, so I have this on G55X, so I'll press part zero. And now I have those two numbers. I'll pull out my calculator. And what I'm going to do is take the first one, 9.1256. And then I'll add 7.1007, divide by 2, and that's the number that I need to put in there. So it's uh, negative 8.113, and it's a 5, so I'll round up to 2. So I've got 8 minus 8.1132. And what I'm going to do is go up to the G54X and press F1 and then Y. And now I've got the number in here, 8.1132. So that means I've got the center set up. And I'm going to do the same thing for Y and then we'll come back and do some milling. So that looks very, very nice. It looks like the chamfers are pretty much even all the way around. So I'd say that's a success. That means all I have left to do is to drill the two holes in the side and then tap them and it will be ready. And as you can see, it looks good. I have this uh, 440 tap in a holder and this uh, allows me to tap it straight up and down so it's aligned correctly. And what I want to do is uh, put some paper towel underneath here so that I don't uh, mess up the nice finished part. So I'll put uh, some tap magic in here. And 
get started. I don't know if you can see, but uh, those holes looked uh, very nicely tapped. This project was really fun. It was very different from projects that I did on the TAG. On the TAG, I was mostly making injection molds. And in that case, I was using mostly mills less than one eighth of an inch in diameter and not removing a whole bunch of material. So a lot of it was just machine time because I was using very fine cutters. This, on the other hand, I started with a solid block and removed a lot of material. In fact, removed material all the way around it, uh, which is something I haven't done a lot of before. The other thing that was really fun about this is that you know each operation consisted of a number of end mills, and they were all loaded into the, the tool carousel. So once I got comfortable it, with it, because I had to make a number of these before I got it right, I could just use 5% rapids make sure the first operation was looking okay, and then let it just continue at full speed for all of the other operations. Well, I should say all of the other tools within that operation. So that was really fun. Uh, this I did in four operations, as you saw, and uh, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you next time.